If you can fix these two common backhand mistakes, you'll develop a solid backhand attack. My name is Craig Bryant and today we're going to look at the backhand attack. We're going to look at the drive and the backhand topspin and look at how to develop them. There's two common mistakes which are essential to be aware of and if one of these mistakes already exists in your shot then this is how you can try and correct it. And there's one absolutely crucial tip which I'll let you know later on which is key to finding the perfect timing for your backhand attack. So first of all, when we are using our backhand drive, really important that we find a posture that's effective, where the knees are bent, our weight is forward, and we're contacting the ball in front of the body. The bat angle is gonna be more the back of the ball, okay, not completely neutral. It's gonna have a slight tilt just over the top of the ball, and it's going to be quite a solid connection when we're working on that backhand drive. My head is nice and low, my shoulders are level, one shoulder isn't reaching in front of the other, I'm trying to keep things nice and solid whilst I'm playing this backhand drive. And then after each shot, there's just a little reshuffle on my legs just to make sure that I've got good balance and that I'm ready to make those little steps left, right, in or out if I need to. My tempo, I'm trying to find around sort of 70% to execute the shot at a good pace and good consistency as well. And then I can decide from there whether I want to go up a level, increase the pace. Maybe I'm making too many mistakes, I might want to drop down to 60%. But trying to find that 70% level uh, is a good way to try and build that consistency in the shot. Really important that I'm just keeping a small bend in the elbow as I'm playing. That's going to give me control that allows me to use my forearm as well as my wrist. And that's going to allow me to control the ball much better. A real subtle difference for the backhand topspin then is changing the angle of the contact. So for the drive, we were a little bit more behind the ball. This time we're going to tilt. So we're going to be hitting a little bit more at the top of the ball. We're going to use a little bit more wrist in the shot and then that wrist and elbow are just going to snap and accelerate together on the point of contact and that little zip of acceleration is what's going to produce the top spin that's going to make the ball dip that's going to make the shot much safer and it's also going to kick more at your opponent give them more to deal with potentially push them back further away from the table too once again, nice and low, head forward, contacting the ball in front and my elbow isn't straightening, I'm keeping a bend in my elbow. And if someone's playing with a little bit more of a flatter shot, then I'm gonna come up the back of the ball slightly. If someone's playing with heavier topspin, then I'm gonna come over the top of the ball a little bit more. Against backspin, I'm gonna focus on some really similar things. The only big difference here is rather than have my backswing back towards my body, it's gonna drop down slightly, and then I'm gonna lift up from the elbow, brushing up against the back of the ball. That's gonna counteract the backspin. And important that I remember that I'm not just lifting up the back, that I'm lifting up the back and forwards. Yeah, I still want the ball to go towards my opponent, so not forgetting that forward element. Okay, a key thing here is when we do make mistakes, if we go for our first one and it goes in the net, that we just make a little change. We just lift a little bit more. We don't need to go the opposite end of the scale and fully lift off the end. Just make those little and subtle changes until we start to find the right spin, the right tempo, the right position on the table, and then we can start to repeat the skill and really ingrain it. Really important that we try and get our body behind the ball here. Quite common that the bat moves. Yeah, whereas if we're in a good position, we can lean and maybe cover a little bit more of the table. If I need to, then I can take a step to make that top spin. So 
So the two common mistakes that I see are reaching for the ball. And when you reach for the ball and this elbow straightens, we're now relying on the wrist only to control the ball. So we want to be able to take that ball where we can keep a bend in the wrist and a bend in the elbow. That means that we've got more parts of the arm controlling the ball here. And the crucial tip for that one is to replicate that timing as best as we can. So with the bat in our hand and our free arm, you put your elbows in front of your body, make a triangle in front of your body. And at the end of that triangle is roughly where we want to be making contact with the ball. Okay, so once again, elbows in front of my body, make a triangle here. And that's roughly the contact point that I want to be making. And you can see there, I've got a bend in my wrist and in my elbow. Okay, that's going to give me a good amount of control. So give that little tip a try and let me know what you think. The other common error here is that the elbow moves. So rather than the elbow fixing yeah, and pivoting from this elbow, that's going to allow acceleration, speed, spin. Sometimes the elbow lifts and now the shot comes more from the shoulder. And we're not going to be able to get quite as much spin or quality in the shot. So if this is happening, one thing we might want to do is exaggerate that and almost pin the elbow by our side, just so we're really exaggerating the use from the elbow. This isn't how we play the shot. I'm not suggesting that you play backhands like this, but it helps exaggerate the parts of the arm that you need to use. Then when we start to create a bit of a gap again, and we go back into the play, it's a little bit easier to try and fix the elbow again. And then the shot comes from here. Okay, so just trying to limit this elbow moving when we're playing. Okay, so that is the backhand attack. There's the drive, the top spin, top spin against backspin. There's a couple of little tips in there. Try the timing one out. Be careful that you're not falling for these technical issues where we're reaching or we're using the shoulder too much in the shot. If you can master these fundamentals of the technique, then you'll be able to develop a solid backhand attack. As ever, make sure you're subscribing to the channel and make sure you watch one of these two videos. See you next time. I'm quite stubborn with my timing here. I take the ball wherever it lands. So if the ball's landing shallow, then I'll take it later. If the ball's landing deep, then I'll take it really early. So when I'm playing against someone, I try not to move so much. That makes it a little bit more efficient. It's very difficult to be moving in and out and readjusting all the time on the backhand side. So can you find a position that's good for you? And then can you just adjust the timing of the backhand.